Yo, what up, slackers? Today I'm just gonna be talking about a very different topic, and that is Mount Everest. Why Mount Everest? I don't know, I just thought of, like, doing something a little different to switch it up. Um, yeah, so not only being the highest mountain in the world, that makes it interesting, it's also because, yeah, it's associated with China, home, my home country, and uh, that's what makes Chinese people proud. Having one of the, or the highest mountain in the world sitting in their backyard, uh, in the, I guess, in the Nepal-Tibet border, that gives them that sense of pride. So, um, I'm going to talk about it. And, uh, before I begin, today's idioms are, so the first one is, um, mass. Um, mass. Is this Latin? French? Whatever. Um, yeah. It, it's, or you can call it emassy. <laughs> um, it just means that, um, I guess it's just a, a glorious way to, uh, or a glamorous way, rather, to say together, or in a big group. So, uh, if you, yeah, I, I don't know, uh, if you, uh, yeah, let, let, let's, let's give that example later, but, uh, yeah, if you all go to the bathroom together, all ten of you, to go pee together, I guess that's gotta be girls by default, uh, then, uh, it's called going to bathroom en masse, there. Um, and then the other one is, uh, secondhand opinion. Um, yeah, secondhand opinion is just as with secondhand anything, it's not so cool. But it, it just, it just sounds, this just sounds good. So if you say somebody has a secondhand opinion of something, they're basic, basically worthless. Um, yeah, that's, that's just a cool way to, uh, yeah, that's just a cool, just a cool way to trash talk. Hey bro, you got a sec, you've only got a secondhand opinion there. Yeah, you know, what's a good comeback for that? Um, yellow Brick Road. Yeah, this one is, um, let me, <laughs> I don't know what this one means. I don't remember what this one means. Uh, let's see, what does Yellow Brick Road mean? The road to success or happiness. It's, uh, in reference to the film The Wizard of Oz. The yellow brick road leads to Oz. I got it. Cool. I think that was also a famous song from either the Beatles or Elton John. Okay, from Elton John. All right, you got that. The the road to happiness and success. And the last one is a hard bullet to bite. Yeah, this one just means um, yeah, you gotta suck it up and take the punch. Um, you hit some hardship, and it's going to be a hard bullet to bite. So, uh, yeah. Today's, I guess, yeah, today's, uh, I, I really like today's collection of idioms, because they, they all sound very elegant. And, uh, yeah, let, let's, uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into Mount Everest. Okay. Mount Everest is... Earth, how do you say this? Earth, Earth, yeah, there you go. Sounds like you're puking. Is the Earth's highest mountain above sea level located in Mahalangor Himal sub range of the Himalayas? The China Nepal border runs across its summit point, its elevation, snow height of 8,848. 86 meters or 29,000 uh, and 29,032 feet was most recently established <clears throat> in 2020 by the Nepali and Chinese authorities. Mount Everest attracts many climbers, some of them highly experienced mountaineers. Yeah, go West Virginia mountaineers. Um, there are two main climbing routes, one approaching the summit from the southeast in Nepal, known as the Standard Route, and the other from the north in Tibet. I guess that's the non-standard route. 
and presumably the harder one to get, or to hard the harder one to uh, to climb, while not posing substantial technical climbing challenges on the standard route. Everest presents dangers such as altitude sickness, weather, and wind, as well as significant hazards from avalanches and the kumbu kumbu kumbu. I don't know. I'll just say it as if I'm a, a native, although I'm not a Tibetan or a Nepali native. The Kumbu Icefall. There. As of 2019, over 300 people have died on Everest, many of whose bodies remain on the mountain, forever preserved in the ice and the snow. May these climbers rest in peace. Amen. The first recorded efforts to reach Everest Summit were made by British mountaineers. All right. Who, uh, like, if you had to guess, who else would have conquered Mount Everest first, other than the British? They're always the first to do anything, you know? Capitalism, um, what do you call it? Um, free market economy. I guess those two are the same thing and building an awesome empire that later fell apart, but still has its legacy greatly influencing our world today. Um, yeah, hats off to the Brits. As Nepal did not show, no, as Nepal did not allow foreigners to enter the country at the time, the British made several attempts on the North Ridge route from the Tibetan side. Oh, by the way, I just, yeah. I just thought of something. So, using a mass, I can say, uh, as of since, okay, how about, since people started climbing Mount Everest, climbers have been dying en masse on the way to the top. And from there, I can also say, there is... Uh, for for if you are a a career climber, I suppose climbing Mount Everest is the yellow brick road to the summit of your personal achievement and career. Uh, yellow brick road there meaning figurative and also no pun intended. I guess there was no pun there in the first place. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Where was I? Yeah. The British made several attempts on the Northridge route from the Tibetan side. Um, after the first reconnaissance expedition by the British in 1921 reached 7,000 meters on the north coal. The 1922 expedition pushed the North Ridge route up to 8,320 meters, marking the first time a human had climbed above 8,000 meters. Hooray! Um, seven porters were killed in an avalanche on the descent from the North Coal. The 19... Uh, okay, so that was in 1922. Yeah, uh, sorry to hear about that. Those seven brave men and women. Um, presumably actually just men, because women probably weren't allowed to climb at that time. That was in the 1920s. Uh, the 1922 expedition resulted in one of the greatest mysteries on Everest to this day. George Mallory and Andrew Irvine made a final summit attempt on 8th June, but never returned, sparking debate as to whether or not they were the first to reach the top. I guess it didn't really matter, because you were they were never to be heard of again. They had been spotted high on the mountain that day, but disappeared in the clouds, never to be seen again, until Mallory's body was found in 1999 at 8,000 155 meters on the north face. Um, yeah, so let's see. 
The guy made the attempt in 1924, and over 70 years have passed before his body was finally found. Wow. Okay. And, uh... Yeah, I don't know how they were able to identify this was George Mallory. But this is, yeah, at least the guy, the guy's body was found, and I guess they just left it there. Um, this, this was, he, I guess this was where he belongs, and, uh, had he been that first person to reach the top, but definitely not the first one to, to walk down from the top. Um, Tenzing Norgay, Norgay and Edmund Hillary made the first official ascent of Everest in 1953. I guess these are also Brits? Uh, no, actually. Actually, Tenzing Norgay, uh, also referred to as Sherpa Tenzing, was a Nepali Indian Sherpa mountaineer. So, all right, a, a local, a local has broken the, uh, what do you call it? Um, broken the, the, the ceiling of human achievements and uh, achieved the impossible up to that point. Edmund Hillary was a New Zealand mountaineer explorer. Um, so, a local and a Kiwi had made it to the top and come come down in one piece in 1953. They made they made history, and I'm so happy for them. Um, using the Southeast Ridge route, Norgay had reached 8,595 8, meters. Uh, the previous year as a member of the 1952 Swiss expedition. The Chinese mountaineering team of Wang Fu Zhao, Gampo, and that sounds like a traditional southern dish from New Orleans, but it's Gampo, um, and Qiu Yinghua made the first reported Ascent of the peak from the North Ridge on 25th May 1960. Awesome. So, the Chinese were the ones that opened the door on the Chinese side, um, 1960. Okay. So, that was basically the, um, uh, introduction part. I just wanted to, um, highlight a few things that I really liked um, in the subsequent years where um, the climbing has been taking place and um, yeah so let me get to 2015 here 2015 was set to be a record-breaking season of climbs yeah by the way uh, from basically from the the 50s and the 60s where humans were um, able to record their first expedition to the summit. People have been trying and, and even making like commercial attempts, which is kind of common these days, um, commercial climbs to the summit ever since. And um, there have been numerous tragedies that's happened and I'm just really uh, highlighting a few that I, I thought was quite recent and uh, noteworthy. So where was I? Yeah, 2015. Uh, 2015 was set to be a record-breaking season of climbs with hundreds of permits issued in Nepal and many additional permits in Tibet or China. However, on 25th April 2015, an earthquake measuring 7.8 MW, I'm not sure what MW is, triggered an avalanche that hit Everest Base Camp. So if something hit the base camp, that is not good because base camp is supposed to be where supposedly you're safe from the avalanche and it effectively shutting down the uh, 
Everest climbing season. 18 bodies were covered from Mount Everest by the Indian Army Mountaineering Team. Yeah, that must have been so tragic because it, it basically hit the base camp and uh, guys were never able to get out from their tents. Um, yeah, that, that, that is horrific. Um, uh, the avalanche began on Pumori and moved through the Kumbu Icefall on the southwest side of Mount Everest and slammed into the south base camp. Yeah, yeah, that must have been a nightmare. 2015 was the first time since 1974 with no spring summits as all climbing teams pulled out after the quakes and avalanche. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is, this is sad. Uh, the quakes trapped hundreds of climbers above the Kumbu Icefall and they had to be evacuated by helicopter as they ran low on supplies. Uh, I can see a battle royale brewing up at the summit, or at the base camp rather. The, the quake shifted the route through the icefall, making it essentially impassable to climbers. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, that, that, that sounds pretty much like a horror movie. And bad weather also made helicopter evacuations difficult. Yeah, just when you imagine that things couldn't have gotten any worse. The Everest tragedy was small compared to the impact overall on Nepal, with almost 9,000 dead and about 22,000 injured. Here's the thing. All the media in the world cares about is uh, a few hundred climbers, okay, a few hundred foreigners came to Nepal or Tibet in China to climb and these people were trapped because they were there for an adventure. They wanted the fucking thrills. And they got trapped because of the weather change. Nobody gave a shit about these locals, these ne Nepali, Nepali locals that have died because of the earthquake. 9,000 of them dead, okay? Tens of magnitudes more than the climbers. You know, these people are humans too. And their lives matter as well. So, just how the the whole media portrays the yeah the 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 climbers, how how much they how glamorous it is. It's it's all kind of on the bodies, on the dead bodies of the locals that have been suffering from their natural, I guess, natural disasters and and um. They, this is their, their natural resource, they, their home, they own this land, and then they, I guess a lot of them live off of, what do you call it, like, climbing, tourism, and, um, I guess one of the reasons that they're still there is because all of these foreigners like to make these climbs, and, and a lot of locals stayed around the area to make a living, probably, I don't know, but, yeah, it's just, it's just sad. Um, and then, uh, let's see. Here we go. In 2018, 807 climbers summited Mount Everest in 2018, including 563 on the Nepal side and 240 from the Chinese Tibet side. This broke the previous record for total summits in year from which was uh, 667 in 2013. And one factor that aided this was an especially long and clear weather window of 11 days during the critical spring climbing season. Um, but wasn't that the year where 2015, the spring climbing season, that's where the avalanche happened? Yeah, um... To those brave souls, hats off to them and so much respect. 
and various records were broken, including a summit by a seven-year-old double amputee, Harry Buddha Magar. Wow. That is unbelievable. Quite an achievement. Double amputee. Wait, I didn't know you can be dub double amputated. Does that mean, like, the arm and the leg, or two legs, or two arms? But either way, uh, any of that combination, uh, an arm and a leg, any of that combination would probably put you, would have uh, given you a, a blue handicap sticker here in the United States. And you can park as close to Walmart or uh, to Costco as possible. But this guy, instead of enjoying his free handicap parking spot, he actually made an effort to summit Mount Everest. And he did it. And he... I think he came down alive. So, who undertook his climb after winning a court case in the Nepali Supreme Court? Hmm, that must have been an interesting story. I'll, I'll take a look at that later. Um, there were no major disasters, but seven climbers died in various situations, including several Sherpas, as well as international climbers. Okay, so I guess... Those seven souls that have perished didn't really matter <laughs> to the statistics, and there was no major disasters in 2018. Nah, eh, just a few deaths, who cares? Although the record number of climbers reached the summit, old-time climbers that made expeditions in the 1980s lamented the crowding. Here's the best part. The feces and the cost. Okay, the cost aside, you know, money. These are climbers. They do this for a living. Feces. That is cool, because I was just looking at an article that's talking about there's nowhere that you can put your foot on the path or on the yellow brick road to the summit without sinking it into dry, either dried or fresh human feces. It's funny that initially, I guess the climbers thought that it doesn't really hurt anything to just take a dump outside of your tent any you know anywhere along the path up to the summit because it will just basically be turned into earth little did they know it took a little longer than they expected for their um what do you call it defecation to actually become part of the earth and they just stayed there for years or actually for decades that is crazy like you are as you're you know climbing up each step, you're getting close to the summit. You are literally walking in the shit of history. That is awesome. That is an awesome feeling. And, you know, as humans, we're all instructed to pick up after, pick up the droppings of our, of our uh, pets, like our dogs or, or whatever, or you can walk your cat. <laughs> um, but here, these humans, they don't even pick up their own feces. That is crazy. Dude, bring a plastic bag and start cleaning up the shit that leads up to the tallest mountain in the world. What? What a... I mean, it's as nice as it, as it is for humans to conquer and uh, ride Mount Everest, you know. Besides, you know, Mount Everest is supposed to be a goddess in the heart of the locals or in the by, by its name. Um, the Himalayas. That, that, that is that is supposed to be a goddess. And you guys leave feces all around the camp and all along the way? That, yeah, that is beyond my comprehension. Why can't you just pick it up? Is it because your fingers are so cold and so stiff you can't just, like, flip that plastic bag over and pick up your, your own dropping? Like, how bad can that be? In the dead winter of um, uh, North America, we still pick up our, our dog poop here. It's it's just common courtesy, okay? So do it, climbers, do it. If you have, if you can pull down your, okay, if you shit your pants, or if you, okay, not shit your pants, but if you shit in your pants, okay, that's a different story. And they kind of just slide down where your where where your pants are supposed to be, or slide down your pants and and just somehow got to the ground. Okay, then I can understand. You probably don't want to bake that up, but. If you can pull down your pants and take a dump, yes, you can bend over and pick it up after you're done, okay? So, do it, and 
just be courteous to this wonderful creature, uh, creation of nature, and be more respectful, okay? And the last piece that I found interesting is that this year, in the, in the global pandemic year of 2020, this is the third year in this decade after 2014 and 2015, which saw no summits from the Nepal, which is the south side. A team of Chinese surveyors climbed Mount Everest from the north side, becoming the only climbers to summit the world's highest peak during the coronavirus pandemic. All right, Chinese pride here. The team was there to remeasure the height of Mount Everest. Why was it so important to remeasure the height of Mount Everest when like everybody's supposed to be staying six feet apart? That was so important, huh? But I guess you guys did it. And other than, you know, a record-breaking year for the Chinese economy to, uh, to shatter its previous records when everybody else was like just drenched in their own shit and misery this year the chinese climbers also broke history in such that this is probably the only year um oh actually this uh, aside from 2014 and 2015 okay so yeah the the chinese were the only ones that were able to make it to the top which one did i not cover okay here we go Secondhand opinion. Unless you're a, an experienced climber or explorer, whatever that profession is called, whatever you say about Mount Everest and its climbing and its roots, it's all just a secondhand opinion. And nobody wants to hear it. There. Secondhand opinion. Yeah. And the hard bullets are by, I think I have a good one. Um, that Japanese climber in 2015 after the uh the mountain reopened he was i think well, i think he was 700 meters away from the summit and that's when he hit bad weather and really horrible wind conditions and he had to turn around that was a hard bullet to bite you were 700 meters what 700 meters that's like uh two laps right two laps in a olympic stadium track um you're less than two laps away from you know reaching your personal best and reaching your dream of um getting to that top you've probably been preparing for this for years decades you're almost there and then the wind started picking up and yeah the sun the sun is gone and all of a sudden is yeah, it's what is it called? Northern End. Is that is that the one in a? Is that where Prince Arthur sat on the ice throne? Anyway, um, yeah, that is a hard bullet to bite. Okay, but you have, I guess, you have two choices: either suck it up and just try to stay alive, and and just. Uh, yeah, be alive, enjoy being alive, while lamenting on uh, giving up on your dream 700 meters away. Or, you keep going, and you become another ice statue up at the top. Or you take the risk of becoming a statue. Yeah, that's a hard choice to make. But, yeah, for those who have turned around, that's a hard bullet to bite. So, yeah, that was my... Yeah, my, my uh, wiki read on Mount Everest, and uh, hope you all enjoyed it. I'm signing off now.